Um, it did do the tweet right? Yes, okay. So the tweet's down. We're good to go. Um, I just want to say, uh, oh, the color shifting, that's what it was. Um, that uh, with the color shifting option, a lot of items be kind of, they kind of become a little bit unrecognizable, at least to my eye. Sometimes it'll look familiar, but I can't quite jive it with, you know, the catalog of items in my head. Um, and it's because the color shifting can uh, make things look so different. Um, so yeah, it's something to get used to. Uh, I myself don't really do a lot of color shifting. I actually haven't really done a lot of building lately, um, which I hope to change sometime in the near future, but um, you know how things go. Uh, but just a heads up that if something looks a little odd, like the grass here, um, we all know usually that's kind of a, I think it's like a, a tan brown, like burnt dried out grass and she's turned it pink. So um, just some things to kind of give it a little different uh, look. Just be aware there's going to be a lot of that. Uh, I've already taken a little sneak peek because she had to show me. One of the uh, big reasons that we have Aurora with us today is because uh, her plot takes advantage of the interactables. Um, there's several uh, little gimmicks um, on this particular plot that only are active when she's actually on the plot to be able to make it active. Um, it's just one of those things where, you know, you constantly have to have, it's the way the interactables work. Um, so like with like the games that Katia puts together, the mini games, um, she usually sets up a, a side character um, that just acts as kind of a place thing and is able to keep them active 24 hours, whether she's online or not. But uh, with the interactables with just regular individuals that don't have that snazzy setup, um, they have to be on the plot to have it actually, you know, the things workable. Um, that's the only disadvantage, I think, about the Interactables uh, feature for KBT, or Katia's Builder Toolkit. Um, but it's fun if um, she's able to be around, uh, and you can uh, check out the plot. Uh, definitely uh, do so and, and see how the Interactables work for you up close. Um, I'm going to be trying to show those today um, and explain sort of kind of how it goes on. We've done some... Uh, demos, and I know there's several other demos from like uh, Chef Noriak and stuff about some of the features of KBT. I don't know how extensively like, they go into the interactables feature, um, but it's really something that's pretty fun um, if you can get familiar with how it works and uh, get used to, pro, you know, coding in all the stuff. Um, so yeah, it's a little beyond my level so I don't really use it that much. I think I've used it for like a light switch a couple of times and it still doesn't work properly. Um, but um, yeah, it's something to think about. Um, some new little gimmick that you can put on your plot and uh, have it a little bit more immersive, especially for role players. It's a big deal for them um, and such. So again, um, good morning to everyone. Good morning, Bones. Anyone else that happens to be lurking around in the chat, uh, thank you guys for joining and hope you enjoy the tour today. So again, we're on Pirate Cove by Aurora Azure. Um, and you can see that uh, lots of water, a little island type of thing going on. You see the ship in the distance. And uh, of course, uh, lots of beachy little areas here. Um, most of the, the rock features, I think, um, are the purple rock arches, which you can see she's obviously color shifted them to a different color, more of a brownish, uh, sandy look, as opposed to the traditional purple that we are familiar with. Um, she's done a lot of nice work with using um, some of the, I think it's strain items and uh, coral-like type of items, like some of the bushes from Arcara and stuff. She used it as underwater uh, elements that really help kind of make it look like it's a, an ocean or a sea uh, type of water. Um, so yeah, we're just going to kind of run around here the edges just to kind of look and get some different um, viewpoints of some of the elements. Again, purple rock arches, I think, from here. 
I believe the water element is um, an oversized upside down, uh, oh, what do you call it? Silver chalice, the exotic silver chalice. Again, it's the type of item that um, allows you a little bit of, whoop, I'm going to get stuck in the weeds here. <laughs> um, it's the type of item that allows you to kind of sink into the water. And uh, it's because the collision of the item, when it's upside down and you're on the bottom, it, it's not right at the bottom. It's slightly inside the base of the, the, the chalice. Um, so it gives the illusion that your character is, you know, immersed in the water. Um, of course, if you adjust your camera angle at a certain bit, it kind of disappears. So it's a little weird that way. But, um, and of course, it's uh, static. It doesn't have any uh, animation or anything um, because it is a, a goblet of some sort. Um, but it's awesome for uh, this kind of uh, water. It's see-through. It's the right color. Um, and of course, you get that illusion that your character is under. Obviously, she's not swimming. She's just running around on the bottom uh, of the, the water element. But it's, uh, it's a nice thing. A lot of people will use it for even smaller water features like ponds. Um, I've seen some use it for tubs and things. But you can see here where it looks like, you know, your, water, your character is in the water. It's a little different than if they had just used layered glass, which used to be the go-to for large areas like this. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so if you get a hold of a chalice, that's probably the biggest thing folks will be using it for. Um, it's a cheap way of doing the water. Now, if you have the waterfalls, um, we have seen a lot of people using the newer ones, um, uh, just planting the upside down part and taking advantage of the animation to make it look like moving water. Um, you can size them up pretty good and cover an area like this pretty well. But uh, this one, you can see how it goes off into the distance to the horizon. It's not completely, uh, probably if we get higher up, we'll see the edges of it a little better. Um, but it still gives that illusion as if the water feature just continues on into the distance which is helpful in trying to create the illusion that this is um, a section of the world rather than just a floating uh, chunk of earth that uh, someone has decided to build on. Now we'll take a closer look at the ship. Um, I don't know how much has changed from its original state. I think this is the one that uh, had before, um, but we'll take a, a look at it anyway, even if it's the same. I'm just kind of running around here. Some of the land features. Got a porter console there. Again, all of this is like purple rock arches, as far as I can tell. I love this little, it's not like a, a tent kind of thing. It's just a little cover, but it's using the tiki roofs, just two of them. So it looks like one is being used as the mat for folks to lay on. It's be used for like just a lounging kind of thing or you could set up a little market uh, using these where the the wares are displayed on the ground here i thought that was cute just a simple little structure but it's two pieces and here's a, a makeshift uh, hammock uh, we do have the hover hammock but it's kind of annoying because uh, partly because it moves and if you set something on it it like looks a little weird because it's moving and the item that's set on it isn't. So that kind of throws things off. So being able to uh, make a hammock for themselves is kind of fun. It's just one of those um, shelves. <clears throat> hey, Serpent, glad you could join. <laughs> yeah, it does remind of Castaway, doesn't it? Uh, you should. Did you throw in a Wilson somewhere? That would have been funny. <laughs> 
Um, so this is just using the, I think it's the Draken uh, bookshelf or a little shelf, um, and then some hanging cables uh, to wrap around the tree and to attach it to the shelf itself. Got a little fire pit going on here. Um, these are, uh, I'm not sure what's being used for the handles. I don't know if it's um, the base of some of the uh, flagpoles or something, uh, but this part here uh, is the, um, oh, what do you call them? I call them the shovels, but that's not the name of it. I think it's like spade, the spades. And then of course, another hanging cable for the handle of the cauldron. Oh, my eyes twitching. Uh, was it capped out outside? Well, it's understandable, especially considering the, the ship. I know it took a lot. Here we have a little fishing dock. This reminds me of, um, I hate to say it, but it reminds me of uh, World of Warcraft with uh, oh, those little walrus looking peoples. Kind of like the Eskimo. Thingies. I don't know what they're called. I can't remember. It just reminds me that they have these little nets and things uh, sticking out everywhere. Uh, but yeah, the net itself is the Chua uh, net, Chua netting, I think. And again, those same uh, spades. I keep wanting to say spear, but that's not right. <laughs> the spades for those. And then uh, a mop, mop sticking out. What are you using for the fish bones? It looks like a chumbacomber skull and then something else. These might be the edges of spoons or something for the fins. And I imagine some of these bones are some of those from the Arctera bit. I don't know which one specifically, but that's a nice little fish skeleton. And then the chair um, looks a little Draken-y themed. It looks like fence pieces and maybe the gate being used as the arch for the back. And then a couple of those shelves, again, the same thing that they're using for uh, the hammock. Oh, was I right? Awesome. It's, again, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes, but uh, I kind of know some of the things you like to use for details, like the spoons. Spoon. Here's somebody's um, dropped goods. I like how it's disguising the workable uh, mailbox, but it's like a parachuted like um, supplies. Uh, clever use of the curtains, the drapes used for the parachute and of course the hanging cables and the netting again and the color shifting of those warning signs to make it look like it's got like uh, uh, been stamped from different countries or something yeah serpent aurora is one of our um prize builders I think she's newer to it than the rest of us, but has like completely outdone us all <laughs> with the detail that she's uh, always capable of pulling out of these items. So here's like a little, um, I don't know if it's like a throne or some kind of an altar type of deal. I guess it's an altar type of thing because it looks like offerings here. Um, these are uh, the base uh, and the steps and such are from uh, the Galera stone walls. It's just like several of them end to end there and uh, nicely used for the like tiered effect. And of course, um, the broken pillars with the ivy. The ivy I think comes from the spring decor pack. Um, if you can't get a hold of that or don't want to spend the, the monies for that, um, there's probably other things you can use. Um, if you just kind of, you can use like just uh, some of the regular plants like the um, teal plants are really good for kind of making look like an ivy if you string them across together. Um, if you're just desperately looking for like the ivy greens, um, probably some of the orin fencing would be usable.
Um, uh, I don't know if you can get it directly through the friends list. Um, if they're neighbors, um, you can do definitely get to them from there. As long as you know their character name, you can reach them that way as well. You can just type it right into the visitor uh, tab pop up. As long as their plot is um, open to visitors, of course. If they have it for roommates only or neighbors only or um, private, then you won't be able to visit unless you are actually a neighbor or roommate. If it's private, nobody can. So, Again, Galera stone walls for um, the little altar here. We've got some uh, taurine uh, goodies. Green bowl. I forget what this item is. I don't know if it's the the top of that uh, bull looking statue or if it's something else. Over here we have a little swing for the casual island wayfarer. Again, using those shelves and then some of the fence pieces. And of course, uh, the hanging chains. Now, I don't think these are the regular ones. I think these are the Osun version. Because if I remember right, the Osun version has collision. You can't walk through the chains. If it was just the regular hanging chains, I could pass right through it. And it wouldn't be as, I guess, realistic. Oh, so it was the bull thing. Well, I kind of know my items more better than I thought. <laughs> Now, I think for um, a lot of this uh, raised uh, island surface groundwork, um, it appears to be um, a mixture of protostar insta hills and then the upside down snowy hills. You can see the upside down snowy hill because of the white puffs of snow that come up as she runs. And then it switches here where there's nothing. So I imagine this is some version of those Insta Hills there. Now, I know she showed me how to let's see if I can do this again and jump over here. Probably not because I'm on camera, but I will try it. Ugh. Now, this is like one of the best places to come for a nice screenshot of overall island. Again, you can see how it kind of cuts off the, the extent of the, um, the chalice. Um, but it still looks convincing to me. It almost looks like maybe a little stretch of land that's out there that in the distance. But it still has a pretty good effect. Did you see the entrance? That's where we come in. And then you can see a bird's eye view of the ship. We will be heading off to very shortly. Again, most of this rock formation, this whole little culvert or whatever you want to call it, is the purple rock arches. Just think of how many are being used because there's like quite a few. Yeah, I actually made this. I'm going to try and jump into the crow's nest here. I actually made this when we were visiting, and Aurora was showing me around, just to give me a little bit of a, a heads up on some of the things going on here. And I probably won't make it this time, but uh, I will give it a try. It's a bit tricky. Oh, I bypassed it. <laughs> but you get the idea. You can actually make it to the crow's nest up there. There's a, a little bit of a shot. You can see the detail. Um, it's um, the fencing, the dragon fencing for the horns, or maybe it's falcon. It's one of the two. And then I think um, uh, the metal planks for the trim on the top, the, the rim there. Um, for the curtains, or the, the I guess the masts, um, those are bananas, people. 
He's color shifted them so they don't look that bright banana yellow, but you can see the, the stems of the bananas here. Um, so it looks awesome. Uh, a lot of people will use like um, the tribal mats, either furled or unfurled. Um, some have used um, actual curved walls to make like it's billowed out with wind. Um, but these look awesome. Uh, and to think that it's just bananas being used. It's just, you're like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> but uh, you can see how realistic it looks, like a, an actual um, sail just been pulled up and waiting to be um, loosened to uh, take in the wind. Um, the rest is like uh, pillars, the Cassian pillars for a lot of this. You can see the mast itself is several of the. Um, Two by fours. It reminds me of the log cabin thing feature. You just get several of them and just slightly rotate them off so that it makes a, a full column kind of deal or a pole. Um, we just don't have any good um, uh, items to use for that. Uh, if you don't want to, uh, if you like running out of space and can't afford to use multiples of the wood, um, one thing you might could use, the only problem is it doesn't have any collision at all is like um, the sparking wires. Um, you could oversize those and put the sparking part down in the ground and uh, use it like that. Of course, it'd probably like poke right through the bottom here. So I don't know how feasible that is, but that's the only thing I can think of. I mean, we have handles like from um, some of the banners and um, uh, like trying to think what else. It's the only things I can think of, but they always have those extra bits that you have trouble hiding. So yeah, um, it's more useful having the 2x4 um, log there, but again, it's expensive uh, item-wise. Yes, it does remind me of the, the minions. So you can see bananas for the sails, 2x4s um, for a lot of the masts and, and big major woodwork there. Uh, Pillars for the, the brackets or whatever you want to call them. Um, the ropey looking ladders, those are, or, or it's just the, the rope bits, like netting here. Those are ladders. Um, we've seen Aurora use this in the past. I guess I should get off my mount there. Great use. It looks like, you know, thick um, roped netting like you would expect on a ship. Again, um, most of the ship itself is um, hover part pieces. Um, there's some domes for some of the work. You can see there's, um, it looks like either uh, gates or fences for a lot of the, I keep calling it filigree, I'm sure that's not the right word, but like the detail, the little trim or whatever you want to call it. Um, one of the ships in the past that she made had um, uh, extensive use of the Google portraits, using a lot of that as a lot of the decoration. But you see there's domes here, down here, closer look at the base of the ship. But yeah, you can see how there's hover park pieces. I'm not going to go through the trouble and try and name them because there's a lot of different versions. And there's like over 90 pieces of those suckers, so I'm not going to like try and figure out which ones they are. You'll just have to kind of go through. It's one of those things I imagine she probably just like clicks through until she finds a shape that she thinks she might can use and then just fiddles it in there. Um, I think some of these are like the edge pieces or something. And uh, yeah. The anchor, of course, is the actual anchor item. Um, I have seen a few people create their own anchors, and I think um, Aurora did it in a past build of this. Um, but this is the actual, I don't know the actual name of it. I think it's just anchor. I don't know. Um, but then she uses the um, Osun chain links to build up the, uh, the chain that's hanging on to the anchor so that when they launch it out, it, it keeps the boat in place ship. 
curved walls or some of the base. <clears throat> Again, awesome use of the hover part pieces. It's not just for hoverboard tracks and stuff. <clears throat> Yeah, the capped part, the run out of room, I'm sure that uh, had a lot to do with the amount of detail. Because like Aurora says, she would have kept her custom one. Because uh, I think a lot of us that like to do these custom bits, even if they have the item in game, like a mailbox or um, uh, the anchor or uh, a TV, they have those items, but we like building our own. <laughs> like the toilet, the toilet's like the biggest. <laughs> Okay, for um, this part here, again, hover part pieces, and then that same trim that's used on the crow's nest up above, the metal planks, and then the fencing. Same way with the railing here for the staircases. The stairs as well are just hover part pieces. All of this hover park, hover park. Got a custom cannon here. It's um, hover park pieces for most of the base of the structure. A little bit here. You've got um, the red moon vents and then those pillows. Uh, I call them pillows. It's, I think it's Draken Shield or something like that. And then it looks like the Merg explosives for just the inside and this little nozzle here. Uh, sparking wire for the fuse. More of the uh, Red Moon vents for that little brassy, bronzy decoration there. And then you can see they've even got it hollowed out. So it's just the tubes and it's multiples of them. To get that thickness, um, make it look a little bit more beefed up than just having it just a single tube. And others will probably get away with a single tube because, you know, again, you're trying to narrow down your, your decor count to make room for other details that you want to include. Um, you have to cut back on this, but uh, uh, the cannonballs, of course, are just spears. Uh, the life preservers, those are actual items. They're not that easy to get. I'm surprised you were able to get two of them. I think I've only gotten one, and that was off of the auction house for a not-so-cheap amount. Um, some of you that have visited the this version of the ship earlier will be familiar with some of these details with the compass and the bell and how intricate the uh, ship's wheel is. I can get a good close-up of this little beauty. There's it's a lot of detail, and it's hard to showcase it properly. The other side. There you go. It's like a combination of walls, I think, just kind of tilted and angled just right, um, with cylinders. I mean, not cylinders, uh, domes, um, hover part pieces, and then these little details, the gold bits that you see not only on the wheel and the compass and the bell, those are all um, the heart-themed uh, tables, I think, the little side tables. I suspect the lettering here is either the edge of um, books or um, walls of some sort. And then the little pointer, the compass needle, is uh, the spear, one of the Draken spears. The wheel itself is an actual uh, nautical wheel, and then um, she's just dressed it up with um, the, uh, the tables. I don't know what's being used for the trim here, honestly. <laughs> it looks like some kind of like uh, uh, hover park piece, but just because of this design here, but I don't know what piece that might be. <clears throat> hey, Poi, good morning. No problem. 
we've been kind of our schedule's been kind of wonky anyway, so it's it's no biggie. Happy you could, you could make it though. And of course the bell is hover part pieces, domes, and then uh, larger size uh, tables there. This part here too. This looks different. I, or is that actually part of the um, nautical wheel? I really don't know. I don't think it has the stripe bit here, though. Oh, is that just the wheel? I, it, uh, this is me not paying attention to the wheel. <laughs> Okay, and we do have the, I guess it'd be the captain's quarters. Again, color shifting for the door to make it not look so gaudy. Usually it's like got a red uh, center here and like gold trims, I think. And this has just been kind of dulled down a little bit. Um, the little skull thing up here, I think that's some kind of a Elden bit with the golden skull. Um, Cassian walls for the carpeting always looks nice and neat. I think it's like two of them butted up, so it's like multi, you know, two strips. Hey, Twitch. Glad you could join. <clears throat> okay, so we have some scrolls here, which I thought this was a, a fun idea. Um, usually, People will use the, um, it's not the empty trophy cabinet, it's the other one. It's got like the Christmas lights and the doohickeys on it. Um, that's got like the little shelf at the bottom that's stuffed full of scrolls. And a lot of people will use that. These are some homemade ones. I've made some myself. I think the scroll kind of thing that I had was the edge of the folded towel. This is much smarter. I don't know why I didn't think of it myself, but, um, it's just the rolled up uh, tribal mats. And then this one here that looks like it's open, it's three tribal mats, two rolled ones and then a flat one. And then they're using the uh, Merg Dynamite as the little handles for the scrolls. Pretty smart. And you'd think, you know, people have thought of that long before, but um, yeah, it's one of those deals is, it's so obvious, it's not, regularly used kind of thing. Um, this little display here for the sword, the, the saber or whatever it is, it looks like um, leaf windows for some of this woodwork. And uh, possibly uh, an actual um, display case and they just tilted it slightly, I think, and pushed it down so you don't see the base of the cabinet itself. You just see the glass and a little bit, I think, of the, the body of it, just a little bit. And then um, this part here, the yellow part, I think is the water trough. And then inside that is the red chua pillows to make it look like it's sitting on satin or something or pillows or whatever. I think that's what all that is. And uh, here we have, um, I don't know if this is supposed to be a lamp or is that supposed to be like an hourglass or like their version of a clock. Uh, a couple of files, blue files. Then you've got um, two of the brown tables and they've got it uh, legs to legs. So it's like it's caging in uh, the sand bits. Okay, so it is an hourglass. And I love the globe. I've tried doing one of these myself uh, a while back um, for a guildmate. I didn't pull it off as successfully as this, but look, isn't this amazing looking? Um, you've got hover part pieces for a lot of the bracketry. There's um, an Osun emblem thing that they've recolored. Uh, the Merg Dynamites 
that have been recolored. There's some of the vents, uh, the red moon vents. And of course, the globe itself is uh, the domes, but then the little land features, those are those frozen uh, water. A lot of people use it for like if there's a spill or they want to pretend like something's busted or something. Uh, they'll use this, the frozen water, so frozen lake, whatever it's called. And they've used multiples of those to build up the little continents on this awesome globe. And of course, the base is uh, more of those um, vents and hover park pieces. So awesome. So much more complicated and, and detailed than the one I put together. And of course, kind of a chandelier type of thing. We've seen some others use it. I've used it myself, the nautical wheel um, with the candles on it. Uh, for those that are looking for a chandelier version, you would, you know, just put some hanging chains or some such on here to, to hold it up. But they've just got it braced on the actual mast. The desk here, oh my gosh. I see two of pillows. Um, I think this is just the regular bar and they've, I think turned it upside down maybe. And uh, then you have, um, looks like metal planks for the top. Um, some swords, the back side of one of the mounted heads and then the skull there, make it like a skull and crossbones there, sort of. The pistol is another nice little Trying to get a good close up here. You can see there's like a tube. Um, there's the vintage beer mug. There's a little bit of looks like taurine, uh, maybe like the. Uh, uh, it's not the furnace. Uh, it's something else. Um, looks like a goblet for the end here. Um, a cauldron here, and then these parts are the um, feeding trough. Looks like a couple of the beer mugs. For the little trigger and everything. Uh, another one of the scrolls. Then we've got uh, if I can. Really hard to get close just because of how things are set up. Looks like this is supposed to be a magnifying glass, I think. So it's it's hard to see, but it looks like a couple of bowls with maybe the bottom of a glass being used as the lens and um, a Merg uh, dynamite for the handle. Sword Maiden's Forge, that's it. Okay, so it was kind of close. Furnace wasn't the right word, I knew, but uh, like tough <laughs> to think of everything. Um, then there's a quill, uh, an ink pot. Ink pot, of course, is the uh, Draken, um, cauldrons, several of them together. Uh, the quill itself, I think it's a combination of um, knife maybe and spoons or a couple of knives and one spoon, something like that to make it look like a feather. Um, the little pile of coins, um, obviously it looks a little slightly off because the coins are kind of like cut halfway, but I think it's the pot of gold and they've just sunk it down so that the pot isn't actually visible. So it looks like a pile of coins and then these little stacks made of the coins. Two knives. Okay. I was on the right track. Uh, the lamp is um, several glasses together. I think it's either they've been color shifted or it's like empty and filled, empty and filled. Several of those put together. You see the um, red stool as the little topper there. Looks like a blue file that's been recolored to a yellow. And this looks like a dome. And then some hover part pieces for the base there. And then of course the nautical wheel. Excuse me. The little beer tap here. Um, everybody's favorite little splotch for spilled liquids or goop or whatever you want to call it. It's just the eye splotch turned over so you don't see the eye. 
Um, with the color shifting, it makes it a little bit more interesting because you can change the color of the liquid instead of always having it the purple. Um, but the, the keg here is, uh, I think it's the half and half barrel, the half metal, half wood. I don't remember the name. It's like metal wood barrel or wood and metal barrel or something like that. Um, it looks like some uh, Red Moon vents. Uh, looks like maybe the um, propane tank, another vent, and then a tube coming out. And then for the ends here, the holder, the thing that's bracing it, it's just two upside down uh, water troughs. Um, for these little goodies here, that's the empty trophy cabinet with um, some of that wall that's being used for the carpet. I'm going to mark that up. Um, these, I think, are some of those um, plants that come from the spring decor collection. <clears throat> and then, of course, the ball. And then this part here, um, these are, I think, just different drapes that have been recolored. The uh, ties, though, I'm honestly not sure what those are. Bowls, maybe? I have no idea. <laughs> it looks great though. Uh, the captain's hat on that skeleton there, it looks like um, it looks like bookshelves, but again, kind of hard to tell. I can't get my camera to sit still. Oh, are the ties on the drapes? Oh, there you go. Maybe there's some color shifting going on that's changed to how they look with the green. The color shifting is a little weird. It's not like you can select which part of the item is color shifted. It's just everything, and it kind of makes some things look a little off. So maybe it turns the ropes pink instead of red, something like that. And then, of course, we can't forget the chair. The chair is awesome. Look at the detail on that. It's hover part pieces galore for the framework of the chair, and then just tons and tons of chua pillows for all of that nice leathery velvety cushion stuff going on for the seat the back and a little decoration up here good well it was a good view of the chair until i moved <laughs> just crazy detail Okay, I think I got everything in here. Uh, the bookshelves, uh, those are metal planks as well. If you're wondering about those. Yeah, I think that's I think that's most that. The last thing we have is the downstairs part. Um, you'll remember that Aurora is really uh, fantastic at these like little paintings or murals or whatever you want to call them. Um, this is the one of the, I think it's called the, um, was it Lanternfish? The one that kind of lures uh, their prey by having that little dangly lure kind of thing sticking out. Really creepy looking. I couldn't possibly tell you what all the pieces are. I can see green pillows were part of the fins. Um, a lot of the, the bodywork of the fish is um, the strain pieces. Um, similar to kind of what I did with the, uh, the seahorse I made for um, uh, Katya a, a long while back. Anglerfish, there we go. Lanternfish. Where do I get lantern? I'm thinking of the light, I guess. Uh, the light uh, on it, obviously, is the uh, blinky light from the detonator. Um, the the water is the top side of the orange dresser, uh, and of course we've got those purple rock arches and their natural coloring there. Um, with the very base of it is some obsidian stone. Yeah, I think most of it is is strain pieces and maybe purple rock arches. There's probably other things in there too. Uh, but 
I couldn't tell you what all's there. I, I want to say these are detonator lights as well, the little glowy bits, but I couldn't say for sure. And yes, it is creepy. I tried to make a three dimensional one. It was way back when I did that fish, like that giant fish with all the plates for the scales that was like crazy. Um, and it just didn't come out as ferocious looking as this. Mine looked really, but I think it's, it's different when you're working for like a three dimensional object and then one that's kind of, you know, 2D. Uh, it's a little easier to get away with certain things, being able to use certain items in a way that, uh... oh, is it the purple egg thingy? Okay. See, there's that eye from the eye splotch snuck in there for his eyeball, which makes it even creepier because it moves. Again, ladders for that ropey looking stuff. I like the use of the chests here as part of the chairs. It's just the orange. Um, yeah, the orange easy chairs, three of them here for the, the larger, like, love sofa kind of thing. Um, then hover part pieces to trim it out with the um, chests. For the armrests in the back. Another uh, lamp, like, above. Uh, this time they've got it on a tiki table. It's like the tiki bar, and then um, it looks like one of the tiki stools upside down, possibly, or maybe it's right side up. I can't really tell. Uh, as the base. Look how um, she's using those uh, empty trophy cabinets as the decoration here. Give it like that golden filigree look. Uh, this one is the orange shelf. I think these here are the uh, water troughs. Um, this here is, I think it's the green lantern. And again, hover park pieces extensively for this bed. Then for the bedding itself, it's one big pillow and then lots of little ones for the, you know, fold a down part of the blanket for the comforter, um, stools for the pillows, and then for the sheets or mattress, it's the uh, snow blocks, I think. But just look how over the top <laughs> it is. All of that fancy detail. Even this here, uh, the little latch at the bottom. Um, it's, I think this is the handle on the big red pot with the flower or the little tree weed thingy growing out of it. I think it's that. And then um, possibly picnic tables or something being used to make it look like a little latch there, cover. Just a, such attention to detail, and, and it's just crazy, mind-boggling. There's a little bathroom slash shower. Well, I guess it's not a shower, it's like a tub. Again, using the frozen uh, water to kind of represent spills for the mop, the bucket. Um, I think these, I don't know what tanks those are, um, but this is the L pipe. Uh, the mirror is just the backside of a plate. Uh, looks like picnic tables extensively for this part here, even going around. You can see how many is being used. Just make it, she wanted it to be able to look like it's sunk in there. Boardwalk color shifted for the latch. Okay. Or hatch. Latch or hatch. Um, this looks like the top of, or I guess it'd be the bottom of the um, feeding trough to make it look like the lid. 
and then using some cylinders or something. I mean, she went through the trouble of making the hinge here. That's that's detail, folks. <laughs> Gotta make the hinge. <laughs> Most of us would just say, no, we don't need it. We'll just pretend that it's there and let it go at that. So this is boardwalk here. It's probably because it's got like the bolts there and then the misshapen wood and stuff. Um, but if you don't want to use that, again, you could probably get away with using the tops of the um, the uh, picnic table. Um, even this would work. The, the wooden crate probably could work. Um, if you're not so bothered by it being a little bit more straight wood, uh, maybe even some of the decking pieces could work. Give it a different contrast as well. The hinge is a rain gutter. Oh, well, there you go. This looks like um, the tiki roof stick. Okay, so that is the ship. And I think most, if not all, of the exterior parts that are um, worth noting. Uh, again, um, there's a lot of detail as far as the, the coral bits, but the last thing we need to look at, and probably the, the most intriguing part, especially for those looking for examples about the interactables. Oh, did I miss a thing or two? Okay, wait a minute. We don't want to miss a thing or two. What did I miss? Where are you? Oh, okay, I see. Hold on. Zoom in. Is that uh, Captain Hook's hook? <laughs> um, this, this little hooky part, that's, um, is that part of the clock? The only thing I can think of is it's got like a little curvy part like that. And then some domes, uh, that shield pillow thingy, uh, the vents. Ah, I was right, because I think I used it for um, some chairs and also for like a sled one time, because it's got that little funky curvy thing. It's not a very easy piece to use, but. And then this is, um, what's that called? The telescope. Looks like a plate, um, some cylinders. The vent tank, a couple of those. This could be used, you could adapt it to like a, a actual um, telescope for like looking um, uh, for sky watching and stuff too. We've seen some, you know, have those on the tripods. Yeah, the little hooky thing is really um, not very easy. I mean, you can see there's still some bits showing that you probably don't want to actually show, but there's just there's no going around it. It's just because of the, the way the item is, because it's like the, the the brass metal bar or whatever that is hanging on. I think. So then you got not only that to deal with, but the the moving clock itself to hide. So it's somewhere inside the box. Okay, is that everything? I hope I got that at all. I'm sure there's a lot of details that I'm probably missing, but uh, or things that people might have some questions about. But again, this is part of the fun of coming to visit these places in person. You can see it a little better. Because again, um, screenshots and videos just do not do these plots justice by any means. Okay, so that's the exterior. And as Aurora said, um, the the core count is maxed, so there's not really anything else that they can add to this um, as much as they'd probably love to. Um, there's probably some things they would have built differently, like the um, the anchor. They did have a, a custom one that they had made. They probably would have thrown that in if they'd had the space. So if ever Carbine decides to uh, up the decor count placed um, at any time at all, I'm sure that will be rectified.
but yeah, amazing detail. A lot of, I mean, even the landscaping is done beautifully, um, considering uh, the, the theme that they were going for and all of that. So uh, great place. To, I mean, this could easily, they turned it into a pirate cove, but this is could easily be like a resort beach or, um, uh, you know, add some uh, fancy, I think it was, uh, what was it, Maddie that has one kind of similar, but it's like got a really modern house built on to the ledge out here and uh, things like that. So there's a lot of things you could do with it. It doesn't have to um, be the pirate cove. It could be something else. Um, but if you want to go to the interior, you have to come to this little, little cave area. Again, it's the purple rock arches, and then they've just set it up. So it's just covering the entrance to the bunker house here. Yeah, I love that plot, too. That uh, was probably one of the first times I saw the uh, tribal mats used as kind of a texture for, like, seating and walls and things. And I was like, wow, how come, you know, it's like every time you get a new item, everybody's just brainstorming. How can I use that, you know, in a strange and interesting way? It's like crazy. I think it's got a lighthouse and um, I love the rooms. I think the inside had like a kitty room and everything else. It's just, it was just remarkable. But yeah, um, so this is the interior. Remember, this is a bunker house. Doesn't look like anything like a bunker house, but uh, there you go. Um, we've got a lot of uh, draken uh, fencing. That's where you're getting all these little stones. You can tell that by the little skulls that are inset into it. Um, but Aurora has gone nuts with placing it here and there and making it look like a natural kind of a cavey tunnel underground um, area. Um, you can see uh, the water has been color shifted. It's usually kind of a dull gray, um, but here it's a nice uh, bright blue. Uh, the little cave up here, again, I don't know what's being used to make that dark black, but it could be like the um, cellar entrance. Um, some of the more black items probably are like the, uh, oh, what's it called? The graded floor panel, the back of it, um, maybe the maintenance uh, platform. Um, but here we have the rope bridges. And done in a way that makes it look like it's been broken or disheveled or rotted up. A little bit of ivy hanging off of it. The mossy overgrowth, of course. <laughs> no worries. I don't care. It's, it's okay if you're there. Um, purple rock arches again for a lot of this. See some of that in here. And uh, you'll probably get like an Indiana Jones kind of adventure feel just because of some of the stuff that's in here. Um, but it gets a little even more weird as we progress along. Um, so some of this is like uh, the sandstones, I think. And then this is, I think it's that Gurok rug. Not quite sure. But again, think of all the little bits of rubble showing. That's just some of that fencing that's peeking through. Here we have the Blades of Death zipping through the walls. Um, these are the, um, it's the Marauder emblem or something. It's that, that the coppery thing. I think she's toned down the color a bit to a, a darker shade. And then it looks like knives just carefully placed around to make it look very vicious and nasty. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> All right, Bones, enjoy your breakfast. Goonies meets Last Crusade. Yeah, that's very, very similar. Here we got um, a little water feature. Again, I think it's the, um, let me think. I keep calling it the urinal, but I know that's not what it is. It's like the... Oh, gosh. I, I can't even think of the name. But there's like two different versions, and I think it's actually upside down in this um, 
bit, but they always, they look like really uh, not so nice urinals. Alco, that's, <laughs> that's it, the render Alco. There's two versions and one's like got more bones or something than the other, I don't know what. It looks like one of those, um, there's some of those um, flashy columns, uh, the Draken statues. I think uh, some of this uh, might be some taurine stuff, like maybe the sword. And then there's uh, the lights. Honestly, I'm not sure. Are those the emitters and you just change the color of them? Hard to tell, but look how fancy that is. It looks like the taurine sword here and then I don't know if that's, um, I don't know what all those are. <laughs> it looks awesome though. I can see the green bowl <laughs> and it looks like this is the bottom of a glass. And then of course the waterfall coming out of it. Maybe a couple of bowls here too. Ichthian lamps. Oh, yeah, they do have the, I think there's the ones that has like a little hooky. But just look at the detail in this, people. How far are you on the, the decor limit in here? Is it also maxed out? I wouldn't doubt it. But look at the framing. It's uh, pillars, but it looks, you know, like uh, almost like a mine kind of thing. Another little hazard here with the spheres coming out of the holes on the side. The holes are the uh, vent tanks, the ones I like to use for like eyes and noses and mouths, things on some of my critters. Very uh, subtle there with the skull on it. Corrine Battle Maiden statue. 22, 28 of 2,500. Not not too far off. Uh, the hanging lamp here, that's just the green lantern. And then I think it's a sparking wire being used for the, the rope. Here's a little pit of death. And it's got the blade swinging back and forth. Um, these are, I don't remember the name of it, some kind of a sword that you can craft. It usually looks kind of like a bluish green. Um, it's like starts with a K or something. It's, it's two of them together and it's uh, like two blades or something. Again, sparking wire here. It looks like another tank attachment at the top. Uh, the spikes are from the desert plant. It's like a little bulby thing and it's got the spikes sticking on it. Um, and they've just sunk it down so that you just see the spikes. Kurom's blade, that's it. Awesome. I'm dead. <laughs> Jump down into the pit. <laughs> and I can't mount it. Red. I don't know. Am I going to be able to get out of here? There we go have to give me a ladder or something to ensure that I can get out properly. Again, uh, pillars, uh, purple rock arches, and draken fencing. That draken fencing really um, lends itself well to cavey type builds um, as if, you know, you've had to chip your way through all these rocks and stones and stuff. Okay, here we have a fun little skeleton. Um, I've made some in the past myself uh, for uh, Shades Eve, but mine were on a wall. This is a little different, but it's nicely done, and it looks more realistic because some of my bones are, were made from, I think, towel pieces, uh, but these actually you know, look like bones, bone bones. Um, I can't tell you what all the pieces are. I'm sure some of it is the Arctera bones, um, of course, they got the skeleton thing there. But like you can see how the hip bones and stuff is not quite um, mirrored, but it's close. All 
Uh, I want to say, like, say you've got the hand here, the claw. I want to say this is also the claw. It's just a larger version, and then only two of the claws are being shown. The other one's, like, tucked in. That's what it looks like to me. Same way here. Just different sizes of the same thing, and then cleverly twisted so you only see what they want you to see. Oh, okay, so see, I was on the right track, the claws. <laughs> I kind of know what I'm talking about sometimes. <laughs> then, of course, you have the little um, backers pack. It's just the backpack with the um, sleeping bag on top. Now, the first time I visited, uh, I didn't even notice until she pointed out that there was actually a sign here. Um, but you can tell from my viewpoint where my camera is that it doesn't appear that there's anything on this sign, right? You have to get closer to actually see it pop up. And it looks like tacos. Tacos are being used for the lettering. So it says, choose your fate. So again, it's got that Indiana Jones feel where you would step on the correct stones that spell out the answer to the riddle. Um, the letters here are made with books. And of course, there's, um, uh, I think these, the stones themselves are the small um, glacier platform or something or Something like that. There's like two versions. There's a large one and a small one. I think the small one you can get directly from the vendor, if I'm not mistaken. And then, of course, there's some fire pits down below to give all the flames and the embers popping up. Oh, so the alphabet, this alien alphabet apparently actually exists and I guess technically does spell out the answer. Looks like a smiley face there. And a divide sign and letter J. But how awesome is that? Just the way it's done, the idea behind it. I, I love the the way it was put together. And again, such detail. Okay, so this is where we come into the interactable part. Um, uh, I'll forewarn uh, that this one doesn't actually lead anywhere because it's actually the end of the, um, the bunker house walling. Uh, but the concept is fun. Um, but first, we're going to talk about just the design of how it's put together. I mean, you can see like these pillars here are um, the empty trophy cabinets. It's like two two or more um, to make these columns on the side. And then uh, books for a lot of the trim here. And then it looks like hover park piece to make the full part of the archway. Um, this here is that oversized uh, sword. I think it's usually like a really deep green. Um, this here, I'm not sure where that's from. I wanna say it's one of the wall hangings, but I'm not for positive. Uh, same way with this. I think that's a file, but again, I don't know. Notice that it's colored red at the moment. This is supposed to be some kind of grand entrance to another part of um, this underground uh, cave system. And uh, there's a skeleton below. What? Are you talking about down in here? Oh, yeah, I think it's there. Like, pretty disgusting. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, the idea behind this particular interactive is that you have to work out um, kind of like a puzzle sort of thing. It's not really where you actually have to figure out anything. You just click it and it does its deal, but it's still fun, uh, the concept behind it, that you have to put in the right combination to unlock uh, the door to get the right um, panels to pop up. Um, to get the door to unlock. So right now you see that it's red. Um, the panel itself is any number of items. I couldn't possibly tell you what everything is. It looks like there's some like um, 
the sword here. Um, this looks like two of the bottoms of the thinker heads. And then this here is like some um, the exile lights or something. Uh, the blocks themselves, I think, are the ends of uh, either the uh, not pillars, yeah, pillars, pillars, or um, the end of the. Uh, I can't think of the words. The bookcase, the the trophy cabinet thing. Same way with this here. And you can see the top or the bottom of one of the trophy cabinets says this little bit. And then another large sword. It's the same item here being used for this part. It looks like maybe some fence pieces for the, the horns here. But uh, let's take a look at some of the pictures. You've got um, the little island scene with the treasure chest and the palm trees. Just some stones, a chest, and the palm trees. You've got a little boat here. It looks like one of those uh, on the Nile kind of um, deal. I couldn't possibly tell you. It looks like the ends of one of the fence pieces. Um, not really sure. And then maybe some, uh, I don't know what that is for the, the sale. Yeah, it looks like the, the fencing, the edges of it, the little rod there. So you can see that this is activate. And what it is is there's a, a hanging spotlight, I guess, that um, works as the manipulator for this. Um, the way the interactables work, you basically link um, items to an interactable item. Um, it can be uh, one of those like Elden panels. Um, the favorites are the ones that has like three switches uh, because then you get three interactions to it. But you can do it with one like the, the lever switch um, that has like the on and off. Um, then you have two different settings. And those are like the favorites for like uh, door uh, hatches or lamp lights or things like that. We have either the on setting or the off setting. But if you have one that has like three settings or something, um, then you can have a little bit more uh, leeway as to uh, uh, how you use it. And then what it is is you have a standing setting as such, and then when you click it, it modifies it somehow. And what it does is when you put it into that other position, the interactable, whatever items are linked to that new position, you know, readjust. So you get some interesting effects. Oh, the sail is the teeth of the skull of our care. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> So we see that the um, the little island and the boat are the images that are showing currently. If I click it, well, it didn't do anything. <laughs> you have them active? Is it active? Yeah, it's not doing nothing. I don't know. Maybe Aurora has to turn it on first. <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> not ever working. It was working perfectly before. Do I need to like skip out and skip back in? Uh, I can I can hop out. Maybe I need to hop out. Do I need to reload as well? I mean, maybe I should, should I like, let me, <laughs> let me zip out and then I'll zip back in. How's that? Maybe that's it. It's going to take a minute though, because the loading screens are so long.
All right, I'm loading, I'm going to my place and then I'll come back to yours. Just in case. It figures it wouldn't work like, it worked perfectly before, I, I swear. <laughs> Does anyone else have these long loading screens or is it just me? Wonder. Because I, I didn't start having the low, long load times until after they um, made the communities live. I don't know if that has something to do with it or not. It's the only thing I can think of. Because I haven't done anything different myself, so. Okay, we're back at my place. Let me go back to... Auroras now. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of, which is unfortunate, but I guess that's the price. Well, I kick clicked it like five times. <laughs> Maybe you should set it back to this original setting. <laughs> okay. I'm still loading in. Because like I said, last time it worked perfectly. I got to see the pictures change and everything. It was it was awesome. But yeah, the load times just I'm impatient, I guess. Okay, running back over to the cave entrance. Looks weird without the water. back through the oh, never make the jump okay back to the start so let's just try it again so we have the island and the boat and in theory if I click it there we go now it's changed the image so the pictures are different. So we've got a little treasure map, which is just the um, tribal mats, the rolled and the flat and the rolled. Um, a little bit of the, uh, I think it's the frozen water, for some of the uh, continent part. Same items being used for the magnifying glass as it was on the desk. And then uh, I suspect either um, the two of pillows or maybe the fireworks where the little X marks the spot. And then for the anchor, this one's a little more complicated. Uh, it looks like uh, part of that fencing that was used on the boat and then some of the horns from some of the others. Maybe it's the um, tentacles for this little part here as well. And then for the anchor part itself, the metal bits, it's, I think it's a combination of spoons and maybe knives, something along those lines. Because um, that's probably one of Aurora's favorite for um, little metallic white details is using the silverware. Okay, then I click it again. Oops. Try to click it again. Now it's saying I have to be in sight. <laughs> there we go. Now we get two new pictures. This is the second click of the interactable item. So now we have a skull and crossbones. I can get there. And I believe all of this is um, the vent tanks. It's probably, again, one of our favorite items for black um, kind of details without having to worry about how it, the color shifting. Um, uh, it's uh, just the vent tank just tilted a little bit here and there to get the right shapes. Um, see, like there's three bottoms here and then there's the edges built in for the, the parts of the bone. And we had this, like, there's one here and then another one here and then 
a lot of tweaking to get the shape right. The same thing I used for some of my, like the cat and the witch's hat and things like that for the paintings for uh, Shade Z last year. <laughs> All right. And then we have um, the parrot, which looks like um, most of the, the feather parts are um, mop heads, just been recolored to give it a different shade of feather. Um, the beak and the other black parts, the eye and, and this little bit here, those appear to be the vent tanks again. And then the white is probably either uh, could be any number of things. It could be um, a snow clump or a part of a, a pillow that's been color shifted to a black and white, something like that, it's something along those lines. And then final one, and notice before the dot was red, now it's green. And that's because we've gotten the door symbol here. It's a miniaturized version of this here. So you can see that there's some sandstone. There's the, uh, the empty trophy cabinets, same way here. And then the sword and then the same uh, skull with the little symbol at the top there. And then this symbol here looks like a key. You got the key to the door. That gives you the little ghost, ghost sign. Uh, the key itself looks to be um, bookshelves. I think the, the Dominion bookshelves. And what else I couldn't tell you. I'm sure there's maybe the um, emblem, the one that's got the like the banner on it. It's, I, I honestly don't know. <laughs> Maybe some taurine parts up here for this back, back bit. But awesomely done. And I love the detail um, of uh, how the, the system is set up uh, to work the way it does. Again, it's, you know, the concept is there, even though the door doesn't actually open. Um, that's why I think they gave the little uh, colored dot to kind of give you the indication that something has changed even though you actually can't progress further into this part because again it's the, the the end of the the instance here it's the wall of the bunker house but that's one of the interactable bits um, the next one is over here I think let's just take a look at this first we've got the little the glowy skull I think it's um, got the um, cross skull in set inside it to give the little glowy bits, and then maybe a smoke um, element to give it this this pit bit here, or it could be just the same item. I know it's got a lot of animation to it, the frost skull. Um, then you've got like the soul frost well, I think. I don't know what's giving this design here. I'm sure it's a couple of items that's been shifted slightly because you get the same effect with some of the curved walls. You put two curved walls together, shift one of them slightly, and it gives like a striped look. And I think that's how they're doing this little um, design here. Uh, what item it is, I'm not sure what it is. Uh, these here are the uh, empty trophy cabinets again. Soul frost pillar. Okay, that probably makes sense. But I suspect there's two of them. One's just been slightly altered a little bit because you get some strange little textural, uh, funky happenings um, when you do that. Like I said, like with the curved wall, I think it even happens with the curved glass. There's some weird um, texture bit. Oh, is it the pillar making the glowy something? <laughs> um, for this little. I don't know if it's like a portcullis kind of setup, or I don't know if that's the right word, but a little metal door that would come down. Um, it's sparking wires. So you can kind of see that by this here, uh, but it's just several of them. And again, uh, those have no collisions, so you can actually 
just jump right up into them. So if you're using them for like prison bars or something, you'd have to add something else in to make it, you know, where you can't escape it. Um, again, a lot of this is just general stuff, the chests and things, um, color shifted in some cases. Um, you have this little portrait. How amazing is this little pirate captain fella? Um, it looks like uh, uh, hover part pieces with the water troughs for the gold filigree on the edges. Um, these, I'm not sure what those are, bowls or something. Um, his hat is the uh, graded floor panels. Same thing we've used for like kitchen cabinet stuff. You can see the yellow there, but on the other side, it's like full on black. Um, his clothing is um, two of pillows. And then it looks like snow clumps for his little cravat thingy or whatever he's wearing. Um, for his beard and hair and eyebrows, those look to be um, the ends of the mops. Um, for his little pirate bandana thingy, that looks like um, recolored domes and hollow domes. For his eye, of course, that's the ocular sphere. For his eye patch, it's a combination of um, uh, vent tanks and uh, hanging cables. And she says that these here are color shifted frozen ledges. Um, again, the belt or the strap here, that's the uh, same things that they're using for the hat, the graded floor panels, um, the little uh, buckle here, that's um, Osun chain link, and I think it's the same thing here. And for the little latches here, um, it looks like the edges of the uh, stained glass windows, sort of. Just awesome, awesome detail. Not sure what's being used for the ring here. It looks familiar, but then it doesn't, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the portrait is amazing. And yes, it's a little, you know, pop out, but uh, again, with these kind of paintings or whatever, you can get away with it depending on, I mean, the, the framework is pretty thick itself, so it kind of hides a lot of that being popped out. And um, true enough, you would, you know, you can see how some of it disappears depending on how close you are to it. That's just the, the way some of the items work. It's unfortunate, but you know, see there, like there, it just completely loose the, the pillows and stuff. It's just how that goes. Um, and then, of course, uh, you're limited to where you can put some of these because, like, with the mops, as big as some of these are, I imagine the mop handles go out pretty far in the back. So it's not like you could just put this on a custom wall of some house. You'd have to have it inside um, a prefab wall or in a place where you don't see the back, you know, for a pretty good distance. Ring on the ear is the handle of the lock jug. Oh, okay. Just amazing, amazing stuff. Um, this little here, this root coming into the ground, I think that's from the, uh, it's the canopy tree or something. It's the one that's got like the green bulby things. It's 
similar to the, uh, shoot, what's it called? The um, celestial something or other. Um, but the, that one just has the greenery and the bulby, like egg looking things. Uh, but this one has the bulby and the greeny and also the roots coming down. And a lot of people will size it up and use the leaves as little places to put uh, seeding and stuff like that. Yeah, heart canopy trees, something like that. I, I don't remember the exact name. Um, here you have a little funky gear system that supposedly works with the gate here. Uh, hover part pieces, and it looks like uh, reinforced uh, barriers or walls for some of the metal workings here. Um, uh, metal planks for the inner workings there, and uh, like those uh, soul frost uh, thingies again, because it's got that same design as the other one. A frost pillar or something like that. And then of course for the chain, it's the uh, the links, the Osun links, and then the actual Osun chain for this part. And from what I read a little bit ago, um, the water mill is what supposedly um, controlling the little gear shifts in the back here. But as you can see, someone has lodged a sword to stop it from spinning. That kind of gives the excuse as to why it's standing still rather than being animated. Um, we'll get to the details on this uh, later, but I just wanted to connect the two. Uh, notice the groundwork here where it looks like bricks. That's because those are the bricks. Um, just again, recolor. Usually they're like a really rusty red. Looks great though. Um, this here, I'm not sure uh, what all's. I think it's hollow domes and then books. It's layered in here. And then, um, wow, there's just like so much detail. There's like the soul frost um, wells. Um, there's the bowls, you see there's several of them layered in here to give that little, it's the same same thing that I use for like pies. And then I think bananas for most of the designs, um, you got like the, what is that, the fleur de lis. I think they're supposed to represent elements if I remember right. So you've got like the fire element here, so that looks like a flame. You've got the wind element here, so that's like a little swirly gust of wind. Um, what's this one, is this one water? And then this one, I guess, is earth, like a sandbag or something there. Uh, this little part here, I think, is the uh, propane tank. And then, of course, you got the wolf um, emblems there. I think there's some individual wolfy bits, but there's also some Osun bits that has the wolf bits there and blah, blah, blah. So this is the second interactable, um, if I remember rightly. I'm trying to see what actually is the interactable part. Can't really. Um, but if you watch the the symbols here, I guess they should change. I don't know if I did anything. Ah, yeah, there we go. So you click it and it like opens up uh, the pathway here. See how, I don't know if it was caught well enough. I might've been like not had the camera angle enough, but it makes it into like stair steps into the secret room. Yeah, it's not opened all the way. <laughs> It's my bad. 
Maybe you'll have to switch it. I would assume it switches. Yeah. Oh, no, I guess it, it does open all the way, just right here, to the extra little. I think the first time, I don't know why it didn't work. There it goes. This is a little extra treasure that you can find by clicking on the elements thing. I don't know what interactable item uh, she's using, but uh, I thought it was super clever. Because especially because I was like standing, I think the first time I used it, I was like standing right here, and then suddenly the ground kind of like disappeared. Freaked me out. I was like, wait a minute, did I break something? And then I realized it's supposed to be like a little hidden treasure nook. Okay, and then um, we come to this little space with the final, final interactable. And uh, before we get to that, we'll just look at all the details here because there's a lot to, to notice. Um, again, you've got that canopy um, thing coming down for the roots. Um, you've got uh, some kind of a glass being used as the base of the water and then the waterfalls. Um, this little voodoo hoodoo statue, I assume this is a custom thing because it looks like there's some swirly rocks and like I, I think it's like the thinker head, but for the life of me, I don't know how it was put together. Is this something that's actually an item or is this something you made? <laughs> I honestly can't tell. You see, like, this looks like part of that thinker's skull head thing being used as the table for the goblets. Do you recall what pieces were there? Because it's awesomely done, but I think these might be the bottoms of a table, like the heart-shaped table. I don't know. It's just amazing. Okay, it's a decorative statue thing. Plus the, okay. Because I was like, wow. I don't know what all you used there, but that was crazy. So I think this is supposed to be kind of like the, um, the uh, what's it called? The Goblet of Eternal Life thingy, um, where you choose, you have to choose wisely, and apparently this guy didn't because he's just a skelly there. Um, you can see uh, there's some uh, built liquid here. It looks like just um, the glass that's been recolored and just, Position just enough so it looks like the liquid is spilled, just nicely done. And then the different goblets, and it looks like this one, uh, some of them are custom. Uh, well, actually, it looks like all of them have been kind of tweaked a little bit because the regular goblet has been added with a bowl. This one's a couple of bowls. Um, this one's uh, bowls and a glass and a, uh, a vent. This one's got skulls on it, uh, glasses, looks like maybe a plate. The right one's probably this one here, the crappy looking one, <laughs> the non-fancy. <laughs> um, this one looks like a file and then a glass and then, I don't know what else, another file, I think, two of them butted up together. Decorative totem large for the statue. All right, thanks, Twitch. It's probably some of the newer items, which I am not familiar with because I really haven't been looking for anything special lately. I like to usually go through the, the decor on the auction house just randomly looking. Um, that's how I find a lot of items I've not picked up myself. But the uh, Madame Faye Tiki stuff, well, that's good to know. Okay, over here we have a little throne. Um, I imagine most of this is soul frost stuff. You can see some of the soul frost spooky 
goo there. It looks like a bookshelf, um, possibly. Uh, these spiky things, I think that's the uh, spiky um, coffin, spiky coffin, or spiked coffin, one of the two, with uh, Merg Dynamite on top, colored differently. Um, for the staff here, uh, that's like the fade, and then it's got like a taurine thing, and then another taurine thing on that, and then the file that's been colored pink for the little gem inside it. I like how the, the little treasure piles, even though the treasure piles are pretty much the same things, there's a little extra thrown in just to make it look a little different. Little touches like that that help sell the idea that it's not the same treasure pile used over and over. Look at the detail on this, the crown here. You've got the empty trophy cabinet and a yellow pillow and then this gorgeous Crown. It looks like mostly the Hugel portraits or a lot of the gold work. And then you have um, bottle tops or bottle bottoms as some of the jewels. And then you've got these here, those are the Osun emblems. You see, like this part here, that's just the. Um, it's those end tables again, the same thing that was used uh, up above on the ship for the uh, compass and the wheel and the bell, the same item. And it's just being used and it works perfectly as that uh, little hopper. But the Hugel portraits are amazing for it because they have that nice, um, I keep calling it filigree. That's the only word that pops that to my head. But the the scalloped edges or whatever you want to call it works perfect for the little extra bits. And I suspect maybe one of those round purple pillows has been turned pink for the cushiony bit on the inside there. So like maybe green bottle bottoms and then the files for the jewels there. And then up above, we have a gilded cage. What are you using for this? That's, I was confused about this. Looks incredible, but I'm assuming that's not a standalone item. That's an actual thing you made. But I have no idea what that is. Welcome back, Bones. Something from Arctera. So I guess it's some of those trim pieces. Because I know there's some panels and things like um, some of the ones I think you, what's that? Might have been over there that I thought I saw them. So some kind of Arctera bracketry or something from the Soul Frost stuff. Okay. And just turned it into a beautiful little cage. So whoever tries to steal the crown gets caged up. And that's the end of their story. Again, the bricks here. Then we have the water wheel, which is, of course, the nautical wheel capped with some um, cover part pieces. We've got the waterfalls cleverly laid in so that it looks like it's actually running, you know, it hits and runs across the, the wheel and out the little trough there. And then you have this final item, which again has those little alien symbols for the writing. Uh, I think it's hover part pieces being used for all of this. But you can see how it looks like um, you're meant to line these up correctly. 
so that they make connections or whatever. Uh, this part here, I think it's a Sulfros well, um, some uh, curved glass, some more Sulfros parts. Like there's like all sorts of panels and stuff that you can get from there. Conduit clip. But you can check after a mess with this. <laughs> Hold on. Um, I forget what this item's called, but it's something everybody can get, I think. The last little interactable, um, the idea is, I think, is to release um, the little special doohickamus that's locked up in here. Don't know if you can see, but these are now lined up. I'm over with here. And then you can tell that the item has changed a little bit. Two of the walls have come open. Let's see if I can stand a little closer so you can see the bits move. So you saw this one move. I think uh, that one over there might have. Yeah. So we've got four of the items or elements or whatever lined up. Everything's uh, drawn perfectly. It's just one more that's kind of out of whack. But you can see that it's opened up even more. Now all four panels are out. And if you do a final click, that one shifts into place and you have released the goodie. So it's a lot of items that have to shift because you not only have uh, the, the platform they're on, but the drawing parts and the elements of this little doohickey as well. So yeah, it's a, uh, Again, you can make these interactable kind of features probably as complicated as you want, but just keep in mind that the more items that are shifted per click, um, you do want to kind of wait in between each click um, because it can confuse uh, things up. I think it can like, you know, maybe it uh, borks it up or, or it only moves part of what it should, that kind of thing. So yeah, it's it's one of those deals that um, you just got to take it take it slow. If you're only moving like a couple of items with it, then it's it's going to be a lot quicker. Um, but it does take a moment to shift it. Um, it's the same thing that Katia uses for like her scoreboards and uh, moving the um, uh, the ball around and all kinds of things like that. Um, it's the same principle. It's just uh, this one's just used a little differently. You do a final click and it resets it. It just, again, it takes a while to put it all back together because again, it's shifting lots and lots of items. But if you give it a minute, it'll reset back to its usual setting. And there you go, you got the treasure back snug in its little case. And all of the elements here are misaligned again. So yeah, very um, awesome uh, concepts and detail and just uh, a, a great place for, um, you know, like a, a role play troupe to come and play some kind of like a little adventure game, um, pretending like some of their uh, people are looking for clues on how to solve some of the puzzles and things like that. Um, again, it's not really something you you have to do anything to actually solve other than click the buttons, but the concept is there. So I'm sure people could, you know, figure out ways of uh, running with it a little bit more in depth. Um, the last little thing here is a little uh, treasure chest. Chloe, I guess this is like the, um, the arc. Thing you don't want to open. It's um. I think this little statue thing comes as is. If I remember right, it's again one of those newer items. I don't know if it's that buoy one or something different. 
Um, but then the rest of it is like um, the trophy cabinets and the uh, Phil Frost well. And I think that's it, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Again, super detail, great use of the, the fences for all of the wall work and even the stairs and everything. Make this uh, beautiful underground cavern cave type of setup. Like I think this is even reminiscent of where you have to like decide how much the skull weighs and switch it out or something. Yeah, it's if you didn't know this was a, a bunker house, it would be hard to you'd be hard pressed to, to say, yeah, that's what this is. Because it just it feels so much roomier and drastically different than what you would expect coming into one of those. I mean, you see an empty one and it's like just one big giant room and they've turned it into a completely different setup. It's just Again, the detail is amazing. Hey, I made it across. Awesome. Again, when you're coming up with these themes of, um, you know, what you're going to do with a certain space, the more uh, detail you can give, uh, you know, if you want to do a, um, some kind of like say it's a I don't know a crashed ship or something on a deserted island um, you'd want to think of every possible element you could think of and then adding little Easter eggs like you know if you'd gone to the extent of building a little Wilson ball um, to kind of give a throw back to um, a familiar book or a movie or a game those little things are fun for visitors uh, to uh, feel upon. Uh, some builders will have something, some kind of element that they always put on their builds. I think, um, forget their name, but uh, one builder that I knew of always had an easy chair, a wine bottle, a wine glass, and some books. It didn't matter what theme of plot they had, they always found a place to sneak that little setup in. It's just something for them that they knew that they always have. But um, little Easter eggs from things, you know, or things that inspired, you know, like like this one having a lot of like Indiana Jones elements and, and things like that um, really goes a long way to kind of uh, giving a little bit of a thrill to your visitor when they discover it and say, hey, I know what that's from or this reminds me of this or that or something like that. So, yeah, it's those details that really together a build like this bananas I, it still cracks me up because so when I first looked at it I thought what is that it I don't know what that is and uh, the closer I got it the more I realized it's bananas the banana boat so yeah um, I hope you guys enjoyed um, this uh, plot tour Again, thank you to Aurora for sticking around with this um, and explaining some of the details and being present so that the interactables actually work. Um, if you want to um, visit this place in person and have the interactables working, and remember, you have to get in contact with Aurora to um, uh, ask her to be present. Um, so depending on your guys' schedule on whether or not it clashes or not, uh, we'll determine whether that works out or not. Um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 amazing looking even without the interactables. Um, it's just an extra bonus with those being able to uh, see all that they do. Um, fantastic uh, inspiration for those that are interested in building boats. Um, we've seen a number of boats. They're all different. How they're not only the items that are used to construct them, but the shape of them. Um, you know, the detail that some go into, some don't have the anchor, some do. Um, some go through a lot more um, uh, with like metalwork boats, uh, military style boats. Um, but if you're looking for something a little bit more old fashioned or piratey, you want to say it, 
um, this uh, superb example is probably one of the best ones I've come across, um, uh, especially with like adding in the detail of like this trim and everything, and everything looking like it's it was it came like it is, rather than being pieced together by hundreds of different elements. Um, but even the landscaping with the way the purple rock arches were used for a lot of the, the stonework on the island, even the way um, a lot of the bits are used for um, under the water, certain things, you know, some of these are like trees and uh, other types of stones, which you wouldn't necessarily think of as using, um, but uh, they work fantastically here. Uh, these are the plots to go to when you're looking for ideas. Um, even if you're not into the pirates and the boats, um, some of the elements are fantastic for other things, like some of the furniture made. It might give you ideas about some of the staircases you could use. Um, a lot of people get stuck with just using the regular staircases. Um, you can make your own using any number of things. Hover Park pieces, there's one of them. Some of them use books. Others use tables. Um, it's just endless. Uh, what you can get away with. Um, it's just whatever you can imagine, um, you can you can put together. So yeah, I hope this uh, inspires some folks to some ideas of their own, even if it's not pirate boat, uh, oceany, navy inspired. Um, I hope it gives them ideas for some other things. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, a fantastic build. If you get a chance to visit it in person, definitely do so. It's located on Javit. Um, and uh, uh, I'll be posting um, the name along with the, the comments in the video, so be sure and be on the lookout for that. Again, thank you to Aurora and everyone else that happened to join us in the chat today. Um, it's been a pleasure. Again, we do this every Wednesday. Um, it's going to be kind of whatever happens is beyond my plate at the time, depending on what's going on and how much time I have and how I'm feeling as to what we're gonna go for, but we're aiming for another community tour next week. Uh, again, if we do uh, embark on one of those, it'll be a two-parter. We'll start um, on it on Wednesday and then finish it up on the following Thursday. So um, just be prepared for that. Um, I think it'll be the one on NA side, um, the winner for their side. Um, I think that's how we did it. It's either that or, I don't know. It's, it's one of the, the competition winners um, so yeah hope you guys uh, can join us for then if not remember all of these videos go to YouTube after we have streamed um, so we've got like literally hundreds and hundreds of videos for you to go through if you're just now catching up with us um, and again hope everyone has had a wonderful holiday and a happy new year looking forward to lots of new tours for this year um, again it seems like there's like a never ending supply of new and interesting plots to visit. So I'm looking forward to sharing them with you all. Um, thank you guys for the support that you've given uh, up till now. Uh, it's been several years and uh, it's, we're still running strong and I hope that continues. Um, in the meantime, I hope you guys have a wonderful week, weekend, um, and um, hopefully uh, <laughs> they made it into the the crow's nest. I'm not even going to try again because I'll probably just slide right off. I think it was the farce that I got it in the first time. <laughs> anyway, have a great time, you guys. Um, good luck with your building projects if you're working on anything in particular. And I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.